All right, welcome back to Inspired Forward, everyone. Um, today, I am excited, really excited about my guest. I spent um, the last few minutes telling her how much of the weekend I spent um, learning about her and uh, her, her, her story, pro professional story, and man, I am fascinated. I've got Marky Lemons Rial, Rial um, with us today. I'm Dan Trinidad, and this is going to be a real, real fun chat. So Marky has 25 years of marketing experience. She's established herself as an inbound marketing leader. Um, she's one of the top real estate trainers in the country. She's from Chicago and everything Chicago. She's reg regularly featured in the Chicago Tribune. Um, she's in the Chicago Agent Magazine, Chicago Realtor Magazine. Um, she was on uh, CBS News Chicago and HDTV. Um, she currently works as a speaker, instructor, and coach teaching social media classes for the National Association of Realtors. Welcome, Marky. Thank you for having me. Now, you know, I would not have necessarily spent my Labor Day the way you spent yours, but I get it. I get it. I hope it was entertaining and well worth the time spent. <laughs> it was a pleasant surprise. I, I mean, well, yeah, wait, wait till you guys uh, and gals hear her. She, I mean, she's got an abundance of energy, positive energy, and a spirit that um, I could see why, why she's now um, teaching people, you know, how to excel in business. So, Mark, let's start off telling us a little bit about your story. I know you got in the business world young in life and have been in different parts of business, but got into real estate, and now you're teaching us, you know how to move in today's world. Yes, I was born and raised in the restaurant business. I'm a proud Chicago fifth generation entrepreneur, third generation restaurant tour. My family actually owns Chicago's oldest barbecue restaurant. I thought I wouldn't do anything but sell barbecue, but that was not the case. And I actually came into the world of real estate in 1999 as a loan originator. And I was a uh, I was worn out. I was an unwedded mother at the time and I had my oldest son and he had become accustomed to a lifestyle. And I was sitting down one day looking at the numbers and the numbers said that I could earn the same amount of money, yet I could transact fewer transactions if I decided to utilize my broker's license. So in 2003, I left the loan origination world and came over to the real estate brokerage world. And in 2006, I was attempting to get on the board of directors for the Chicago Association of Realtors, and it did work. I did get on the board. But my mentor told me, he said, Marky, I need you to volunteer more. People need to be able to put your uh, face and name together. And I believe that you should become a licensed real estate instructor. And I followed his instruction. And that year, I started teaching for the Chicago Association of Realtors. And I made it on to the board of directors. And at the time, CAR was the third largest local board in the country. And so I've had some really good mentors who guided my real estate career and real estate education speaking career in the right direction. Well, and so, so you started teaching real estate really from the beginning. Yeah, okay. well, I had a yeah, I had a background in education, though. I'd already worked for okay. Chicago Public Schools when I was in grad school. And once I graduated from grad school at the tender age of 25, I started teaching on a collegiate level. Okay. One, yeah, one thing I've always been is very honest with myself. So I sit down and I analyze the situation. And at 25, I was too young to me to be an adjunct faculty member because I didn't have any real world experience and I was only mm -hmm. teaching theory. And I said, oh, you need to go experience life so that you can bring something <laughs> back to the classroom. And at the age of 36, I went back into the classroom and I had experienced life. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. And so, so tell me a little bit about um, how, how the Chicago real estate market treated you and how you have, I, I don't. <laughs> believe you're actually selling anymore. You're just teaching, right? Uh, yeah, I, I got beat up. I lost everything uh, during the foreclosure crisis, which actually made me, uh, turned me into the queen of foreclosures. Real estate was really good to me. I was in the top 10% of realtors in the city of Chicago my first full year as wow. a realtor member. Wow. And, uh, you know, I was living high off the hog and you know, I was flipping houses. I flipped seven houses in a year and life happened. And what I mean by life happening, 
My grandfather died from Alzheimer's disease in March mm. of 2006. I had my third bout of pneumonia in April of 2006. And then my mother died from a ruptured or a brain aneurysm in May of 2006. Mm. I got married. <laughs> this is crazy. I got married June the 6th pregnant July the 4th, and because of my age, I was a high-risk pregnancy at the time, I uh, fainted on an airplane, and the doctor told me I needed to make a choice. You know, um, you can keep on at the pace you're going, but then you would jeopardize the health of your unborn child. And so when we were coming into the real estate uh, crisis, I was 100% mentally disconnected from the crisis um, because I was dealing with all of these other real world experiences like losing my mother and my grandfather. Yeah. Um, and I joke about it, but I probably did not connect all the dots until 2012, 2013. You know, well, that, that, that's interesting. I, so, so in 2000, in, in October of 2008, I lost my wife of 28 years to leukemia. And, wow. and so I could totally relate to, you know, the, 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 just the mindset that we get into. I mean, you're dealing with life and, and the little things, the market and, you know, everything else happening in the world don't seem to matter as much. So 2006 was, was your year and 2008 was was mine. Well, it's good to see that you've you, you appear that you've rebounded and and uh, the, the the trajectory now is back up. So it that's is. wonderful. That's wonderful. So tell me how. Um, so so you, so you focus. I know my audience would is really excited to hear about um, social media and yes. <laughs> um, how how your career evolved into teaching social media. Um, maybe you can tell us that. So let's go back. I, I have an MBA degree in marketing. So I understood the marketing aspects, but we would call it old school marketing, or uh, it was all about outbound marketing. And when I was at home on maternity leave, I was reading then the 2006 profile of buyers and sellers from the National Association of Realtors. And there was a stat in the report, and it told me that in 1995, 2% of buyers were utilizing the internet, you know, to find homes and in the real estate transaction. But when I was at home, that number was 80%. You know, so I pulled out my fingers, I started doing a little math. I'm like, mm, that's 78%. Ooh, that's a huge increase, right? And so I decided that I would Google my name because I had a website and I had billboards and bus benches and a MySpace account. So I'm like, oh, I know I'm on the internet. And when I Googled my name, it came up less than 10 times. And I realized I wasn't hanging out online where the buyers and the sellers were hanging out and that I had to take responsibility and I needed to own that. And I committed myself to social media and technology, to learning something every single day. And I think it was totally opposite of how I was raised, uh, third generation in the restaurant business. My, actually, we're still probably one of the top barbecue restaurants in the city of Chicago, where they still cook the same way they cooked, right, in 1952. Really? And, yes, <laughs> we, we still open barbecue pit. So a lot of people have rotisserie cookers. We still cook on an open barbecue pit. We still hand trim our meat. And so I wasn't raised in a family of necessarily lifelong learners. I was raised that, hey, this, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. Let's just keep up with what we're keep doing. doing what we're doing. Yeah. And I realized that would not work, especially when it comes to social media and technology, because it's going to be something new every single day. So one of the biggest shifts I had was, Marky, you have to commit to being a lifelong learner. So the social media and technology, if you like a lot of change, it is 100% the world for you because there will be something different by the end of the day. You know, every time you look, you know, you open your phone and there's an app update, that means it's doing something today it did not do yesterday. And we have to say, hey, we embrace that. We understand that change is inevitable. So I have the opportunity to teach new, new is what I call it, all the time to realtor members when if you look at the world of real estate or you look at realtors, we're probably one of the uh, occupations with the oldest <laughs> group mm -hmm. of practitioners. Mm -hmm. and, okay. <laughs> yeah, and they're not necessarily wanting to adapt to this, but every aspect of the real estate transaction today now has a technological component to it if you desire to use it.
Well, you say that you have, you know, this is social media is great if you want constant change, but if you like real estate, if you like being a realtor, you, it, it, I mean, you tell, tell me your view on this, but um, if, if you don't adapt, um, you know, w what's the likelihood of your, your future in our industry? What do you think? One of my favorite quotes is, uh, technology will never replace a realtor, but a realtor with technology will replace a realtor without it. And so yeah. we can adapt and change if we desire. If not, there is someone coming into the world of real estate, maybe someone younger, who understands technology. And I joke about this, but millennials do not complain about older agents or seasoned agents, as I like to call us. Seasoned agents complain about millennials. And so they're coming in because they have half of this down, right? They understand the technology component because they're a generation of people who've always had it. We're a generation, I'm a generation of people, I wasn't born with technology. I'll be 50 on my next birthday. I had to make a commitment to learn it. And so you, um, one monkey don't stop no show is kind of how I call it. So if they do not embrace it, there will be someone that will come and take their market share. And when I'm looking at our seasoned professionals who are, we'll call them, I call them platinum level realtors, but let's look at people who do more than $100 million a year. What I've noticed, a lot of those seasoned agents, they have either hired someone as a team member or they now have second, third generation, their children, their grandchildren that are part of their real estate team who handle the social media and technology. And so you can hire someone, but in hiring someone, you need to ensure, if nothing else, that they understand license law in the state that you're licensed, they understand the Realtors Code of Ethics, but they need to understand your tone and mannerisms. They need to sound yeah. like you online. If not, there's going to be a disconnect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, we, so we, we're doing business with a lot of younger realtors that – um, have just established a tremendous market presence because they, p people who know who they are, where real estate agents that have been in the business for 20, 30 years, they, people know who they are from the traditional marketing, but these newer realtors that have only been in the business two or three years are, are passing them because their, their presence on social media is so huge. They're, they're, they're like c celebrities in, in our, in our little town. And, um, so it shows me that, uh, you, you've got it. I mean, I think you hit it on the nose. There's, there are things you need to learn about real estate, but when it comes to obtaining business, it's how well you understand, uh, building your brand and, and marketing. So what, what have, so when you start teaching a real estate agent, and I guess it would be the same for loan officers, where do you start? Well, let me say this. What I teach actually applies to any industry, even though I'm very niched inside of the world of real estate. I do. Uh, I have a long-term contract with the promotional products industry. This would work in the restaurant business. It works in all businesses. So the very first thing I start with is who are your clients? And it's the one thing that people tend to want to avoid. So we're going back to a business plan and we're starting with what our SMART goals are. That means they need to be specific, uh, specific, measurable, obtainable, relevant, and time bound. And what I've realized, a lot of people don't have a business plan. Therefore, they don't know who their ideal clients are. And they're not hanging out with those ideal clients online because they don't have a business plan. So I'm always going back to the fact that we need to have a business plan. We need to understand that there's riches and niches, right? And who makes up your niche? And this morning I did an interview and they were asking me about my preferred platforms. And to me, if I'm a real estate agent, and we're starting to see some REOs creep back into the marketplace. So therefore, we're going to uh, REOs and short sales. Well, I had secured numerous contracts just because of LinkedIn, because the decision makers were hanging out on LinkedIn. So if you are a realtor and you're looking to do relocation business, short sales, REOs, especially if they come back into your marketplace, 
I'm going to go to LinkedIn because that's where those key decision makers are hanging out. So you got to have a business plan. You need to have smart goals and your social media definitely should be an extension of the business plan. But more importantly, what, what is your marketing budget? What is your strategy? Because we need to have an online, offline marketing component. Mm. Okay, so with, with, with social media, the, where I get stuck often is making sure that I'm on brand, that when I go to post something, you know, whether it's on Facebook or LinkedIn or, or Instagram, that there's a consistency. You know, I, from what I understand, people want to know about you personally. So it's not all, all business, but they, you know, they want to know that, you know, what business you're in as well. And so how do you, how do you balance all that? And how, how do you develop that consistency? Well, first I go back to my, I have a style guide and it has my fonts, my colors. I have consumer personas. So who do I do business with? As an educator, my personas are two people, generally, the CEO of a realtor association, that's going to be a Caucasian man, 55 to 65, in most cases, so let's go with uh, 85% of the time, uh, the director of education is going to be a Caucasian female, ages 45 to 55, right? So I'm starting to break down these personas or, or personalities of the people that I do business with because I need to, one, communicate with them utilizing the tool that they use because I'm never going to force them to communicate with me in my preferred communication style. This is kind of where we have to be like a chameleon and we have to communicate the way that they desire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So understanding who that person is, their personality, and where they are hanging out is, is first and foremost to me. So I'm not trying to serve all people. But from a real estate aspect, I live on the south side of Chicago. Chicago is the most racially and economically segregated city in the world. And so with that being said, I don't talk about luxury real estate because there's very little luxury real estate on the south southeast side of Chicago. So I'm going to talk about down payment assistance programs, creating sweat equity with the 203k loan. I want to pick content that I know will have impact to those buying and selling in my zip code or in the community that I desire to sell in. So all of this is coming back and I use a content planner. Uh, and so therefore I know what holidays are important to the people on the south side of Chicago. So recently, young ladies on my team, they decided to do an ice cream social because it was National Ice Cream Day. They had a lender sponsor come in. That person was buying 25 scoops of ice cream. Actually, they had way more people show up and the lender ended up sponsoring 50 scoops of ice cream. But they were doing that because they know that if they get out and meet people face to face, they'll have a higher conversion rate than they would just from the people they meet online. So it's very much, um, Staying on brand, I'm not always necessarily uh, on brand in regards to the color and the fonts, especially on Facebook. Um, I just interviewed a young gentleman the other day, and he does storytelling. And the way he broke it down for me, and it made so much sense, he said, Marky, only 1% of the entire world population makes over $100,000 a year. That means when we're talking about all this money and lavish lifestyles we're living, 99% of the human race does not connect with it. He said, and so I need you to tell the, the pain because more people have experienced the pain and not having than those who have. And it hit me, one of the reasons that I have a, a large online presence and connect with so many people, it is because I've always been willing to talk about the pain and the struggle. Mm. And I'm like, oh, but I need to be more intentional. And so now I'm incorporating that back into the brand. I'm going to be intentional to hit the pain, to hit the struggle, to not just tell the, the beautiful, glossy aspect of life, because most people don't connect with that point anyway. And we have to connect with people for them to want to do business with us. Wow, that is such a nugget. Oh, my gosh. That is very, very powerful. So 
do you include is it all business for you or is there do you, how do you, how do you mix it up um the rule of thumb should be for personal if it's a personal account it should definitely be 80 percent personal 20 percent business however I am more business than I am personal in regards to the content that I'm posting. But when I post personal, I am highly personal. So I don't tend to just give you a, a glimpse. I tell you the full story. And some of the content that I've talked about, um, lessons learned from dope fiend parents because both of my parents were addicts. I talk about domestic abuse and seeing my father beat my mother during domestic abuse month. So I talk about things that most people would never talk about. But when I talk about those subjects, I can tell you right now, my inbox yeah. is full because people are reaching out to me via I am DM, however they can get to me, to let me know that they wish they could tell their story because they've experienced the same thing. And what's crazy, the more I share, the more people hire me. So it's not like they're alienating me because I'm telling them my truth and my pain. It resonates with them. And it's oh, kind of yeah. like we got a secret together and they're hiring me <laughs> more now since I didn't laid it all out there. Yeah, but that's I, because they're getting the real you and you're so transparent. They're not yeah. getting an actor, an actress. No, they're, they're getting they, the they real get me. you. <laughs> and that's what people want. Yeah, but I got three good secrets. I, I used to say five, but I'm sure I've told <laughs> two of them. Uh, and so <laughs> I got three good secrets left right now. And I'm gonna hold on to my three, okay? So I'm keep, some, I'm gonna keep these three little things to myself. Oh, we can't, um, we can't get you to tell us one. No, no you can't, nah, uh, nah. Cause <laughs> I told two in the last year and I'm like, man, I'm gonna get down. I'm not gonna have any secrets left. Um, and so should, should your colors look the same? Yes. Do you want to use the same font? Yes. You don't want to be all over the place. You want to be consistent. You definitely want to have a niche, but you have to pick something about yourself that you are willing to share. And it doesn't have to be the personal information that I share. Maybe you have a love for cooking. Uh, and I share pictures all the time. My husband believes that Facebook is the work of the devil and he doesn't use social media. Uh, and so, but he cooks and out here say, did you post my cake? I want to see how many <laughs> likes I get on my cake. Right. Um, so I could tell that if he did use it, he could definitely talk about food uh, or his Traeger grill or the seasoning mix that he uses or how long it takes him to do whatever it is that uh, he does. You, maybe you have a love of gardening. So you need to pick that one thing that you will share anything about consistently Man. because you have to be consistent. That's good. That's good. So all, all platforms are there? Mm -mm. No, it's not all platforms. I'll tell you this. I have a Snapchat account and I use it for the filters. So I use it to create content, but not to share content. I do not believe that as real estate professionals, we need to be on every platform. We need to be on the platform where our clients are hanging out. So I think if I was going to tell someone a number, I would say three. I would say that I really don't care what your age is, that you likely need a Facebook account. Mm -hmm. because Facebook not only owns Facebook, it also owns Instagram, Messenger, and WhatsApp. And so I'm pretty sure regardless to the age, you're likely using one of those other platforms. So Facebook, most definitely. For me, I'm a Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram user with Pinterest benefits is kind of how I would say it. I have a Twitter account kind of thinking through my mind, do I really still need the right. Twitter account? Right, um, because I only use it for conferences because there's a lot of hashtag engagement. Mm -hmm. what, so what, what's your take on video? Oh, I love video. Um, I do a lot of video. I believe that real estate professionals- I watched it all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of video. Uh, I believe real estate professionals uh, should create one minute of video content every single day because 60 seconds of video is the equivalent of 1.8 million words. That's its impact and its value. Whoa. And so every single day, I believe that we should create one minute of video. The question comes in, should it be horizontal or should it be vertical? 
And for me, I definitely believe that we should create vertical, which is stories, because if you do not put something in the story feed every 24 hours, you will not have a presence there. So you can have a, a presence in the regular feed, but story feeds, whatever you put will disappear instantly in 24 hours. So it forces you to add something every 24 hours. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I create a lot of live streaming video. Um, I go off the cuff and it hit me last week interviewing someone else why I love live video. It's because I don't like to edit video. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing live video, you kind of get around having to edit video. It is what it is. And your honesty and, and, and transparency comes shining through because there's no filter, there's no, hiding, no, filter <laughs> no editing. <laughs> <laughs> and people say, well, what if you say something wrong? I honestly go back and listen to my videos. And so if I misquoted something, what I'll do is say, you know, at seven minutes and 16 seconds, I said 1,000 when I should have said 1 million. Mm. And people appreciate the fact that you acknowledge that you made a mistake. So, so how do you overcome the, the fear of, I mean, I, talking to a lot of people, the fear of video. Well, I mean, when I first started this podcast, when I first heard my voice, I thought, oh no, <laughs> I can't do this. And then, then, then the video, oh my gosh. So, uh, so for me, I am the person that I used to, in the past, I had to go get a fresh haircut and I needed to buy a new dress because I didn't want you to see me in the same dress twice. And then I needed to run to Mac and have my makeup done before I would do a video. And I had very little video content. I'm an Android user and that generally comes as a surprise to Apple users. So I was waiting for Facebook Live to come to the Android because all of my Apple friends already had it. And the day that Facebook Live came to the Android, for me, it was on a Saturday. I was at Williams-Sonoma with my youngest son taking a cooking class. I saw the icon. I clicked on it. I started spinning around the store, walking people through Williams-Sonoma. And I had never had that level of engagement on anything I ever posted. And it hit me in that moment, they don't care about how you look or any of that. Um, it is the interaction that mattered. And since then, I've been over the phobia of my hair looking a certain way, makeup, uh, even today, I don't have on makeup because I can't come and tell you to do video and not care about how you look when every time I do video, I look made up. That like, that's, that's being a hypocrite. And so I've done videos, bandanas, uh, laid in the bed with morning gunk, gunk in my eyes. Um, <laughs> Cause right, because people want to see that. And if I'm telling you and encouraging you to do video and don't worry about how you look, but every time you see me, I got on a new dress and a face full of makeup. Yeah, it's not gonna resonate with them and they're not gonna create the video content. That makes makes total sense. Jeez. Um, okay, so you do a lot, and you sound extremely busy. How do you fit it all in? How do you manage your time with your husband, with your son, with speaking, with traveling, doing video? Um. All well, I've always had a planner, <laughs> which even in high school, I had a planner. So um, imagine 14-year-old Marky in the 80s with a planner, okay? So I've always been very uh, strategic in planning which my planner life. planner do you use? Oh, right now I, I'm a Google girl, and then I still walk around with paper. So I encourage journals, and I have all my little notes and things I need to do today. And then I use a content planner from the content planner. She's actually on Instagram, and I came across her profile on Instagram because we stayed at the same hotel in Maui. So I found my content, and she lives in Canada, so just go figure. Um, <laughs> how do I do it all? The I have a business plan. I live my life according to my plan. Uh, I used to be with um, a different franchise and one of the exercises we always had to do was what's your one, three, five plan. So I start with the end in mind and I think about the steps I need to take to get to the five year, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't wanna do anything today that doesn't get me to the five year mark. So I am infamous for telling people no. 
that it, that it just works really well. And I'll tell people, you know, um, that's not in alignment with my brand or that isn't what I do. I'm very clear about what I do, who I do it for, so that I don't take on all of these other tasks to do things that have nothing to do with me getting to my end goal. Mm. So I'm a, I'm a long-term strategic planner. Always has. I've always been that way. Um, I with, already With your business and your personal life? With my business and with my personal life. Um, it's, yeah. It, it's it's just kind of how I've always been, um, kind of different. I, I look at the numbers. I do, I use video because what the number said a couple of years ago. I'm starting to I implemented stories. Once I looked at the long term numbers of the stories, so I'm not the person who kind of just jumps up and does things. I do things because it's in alignment with what I'm supposed to do. Mm. And it's kind of funny once you speak that into existence how what you need starts to fall in your lap. Like me podcasting, I kept talking about I need this podcast. And it kind of, a podcast producer, I was on a show, I liked everything that they did, and I realized the person who interviewed me didn't do it. And I said, "Mm, whoever he uses, that's who I need to use. And I started researching them, and I started working with them. And then I realized, oh, I need a book. My book will be out this month. The people who produce my podcast, they actually said, "Uh, Marky, have you thought about a book? Oh, yes, that's on my, look, that's been on the list to do for a couple of years. And so now the book is coming out. So I speak into existence. Let me take it back a step. I watch the movie The Secret every single year. I change my mindset. I got to make sure my mindset is in alignment to attract the things that I desire. I write it down. I have a business plan. And through my daily affirmations, I'm affirming over what I need. So it's not just, uh, it, it manifests itself. I'm very clear and intentional on what I need and what my life and my business to look like. Probably the only thing that's a little different, uh, most women would want to be home <laughs> way more than I'm at home. Um, but to ensure that I have no issues when I get home. Like I don't want to come home and my spouse is complaining. So I have, I call them the part-time or the traveling nanny. At the moment I leave my house, I have someone who comes in to fill my position until the moment I get back home. Because the last thing I want to do is come home to unhappy children and an unhappy spouse. So (laughs) no, I, I bring in a filler. That's brilliant. (laughs) <laughs> right? Because I don't, I don't want to come home. I'm not doing this for us to have money and then not like one another. So my husband has very few complaints, if any, because I have taken care of everything pertaining. If there's a, a sheet, a permission slip that needs to be signed, a field trip that needs to be paid for. Today, I realize my son has outgrown his uniforms. He wears a uniform two days a week. I am buying four new uniforms in case He doesn't do his laundry on a Saturday. He has two weeks of clean uniforms. So I'm the person who- You're thinking things through. I'm thinking it through (laughs) because there are certain headaches that I just don't and cannot deal with. Yeah, wow, wow. So congratulations on your book. What's the name of your book? Oh, the book. We just came up with the name. The Modern Real Estate Professional's Guide to Success. And it's coming out next month? It'll be out by October the 1st, yes. Congratulations. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) How, how did you fit that in? Did you, did you, was it a morning thing? Is it? No, um, I, I, a publisher who basically does a lot of the work. So I, I, I had to come up with some money um, and to get the task done. And so we did an extensive interview. I have a lot of video content. So we took all those ideas and concepts and rolled them into a publisher who basically is a, a do it for you, but it's all your words and everything. So I couldn't tell you how to put a book together because that's what they do. But it was the only way I was going to get the book done because I couldn't put that on my schedule. How long did it take you? It has taken four months. Wow, that's impressive. Mm-hmm. Four months start to finish, but it's all this content, right? We have, and uh, he interviewed me and it was like almost a four hour interview. And I've never talked to anybody on the phone for four hours, but it was hammering out um, the ideas. And 
he came referred to me from my podcast producer and I'm like okay if you're working with him I'm willing to work with him because I like what you've done over here so yeah, yeah and uh it's and and my reasons for doing the book wasn't necessarily to make money as an author it was to bring more validation to what it is I say mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. yeah that's very neat Marky, thank you so much for your time. How, how can people get a hold of you, locate you? I tell everybody, if you spell my name correctly, you will find me. I really do own my brand online, and you spell my name, M-A-R-K-I, Lemons, L-E-M-O-N-S, and I pretty much think I use every tool out there. Um, just feel free to connect with me. I love connecting with people. And if you ever see me in your city, I'm a hugger. So you can come on, bring it in and give me a hug. I love it. I, and, and I got I to gotta tell you, when I pulled up your name, you're correct. It goes pages and pages. And I found out everything I needed to know about you. And uh, it, it, really, it really helps. I felt like I, I knew you even before meeting you. So you're doing, you're, you're doing what you preach. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. it. Marky, thank you very, very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank, thank you for you. all the listeners. I think uh, you found tremendous value. And if you get a chance, look Marky up and, and um, have some conversation with her, as long as it's relevant to what she does, because she's going to say no to you if you uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's anything that doesn't. Marky, thank you very much. Have a great day.